what I know and what I experienced. And you know, that's, they agreed. Well, that's great. Yeah. Because I think you're a very good, good role model. Well, today, Nicole is 21. She's working on her goal of becoming a professional singer and songwriter, and she's also giving back. Every week, she spends several hours answering emails about drug abuse from desperate teens and speaking at high schools and colleges around the country. I've been involved with Partnership for Drug Free America for a few years now, working with some of the people there with emails of people responding to my story who need advice or they're just, you know, a lot of people just are happy to hear that someone understands what they're going through. The dialogue varies a lot. I get emails from kids whose parents are in and out of rehab. I get emails from kids, you know, who want help and can't tell their parents. Because it's anonymous, there's a lot more honesty. Then I have people that email me and say, thank you. Your story really helped. And that's what makes it worth it. It's so great for her to be able to be out there and be an example to other kids because she's just like them. And I think it's great that she can talk to them and say, look, it's hard, but if I can do it, you can do it. They put me in intensive care. And I remember waking up from the coma because when I woke up, um, my ears were ringing like really, really, really bad. And over three years, I've been traveling all over the United States, educating parents and teens so that they understand, you know, the risk that they're taking. Because you can't expect them to make a choice when they don't know what their options are. I gave up. By the time I started getting into drugs, like I had given up completely on everything. Gave up on school. Gave up on music. I wish I could show you the the number of responses we've had from kids that related to her message, and that's the key. And she doesn't preach. She just says, "This is what it did to me, and this is how I changed it." Because I've been clean almost three years, and I'll tell you that I've not been happy. I started speaking not just to help other people, to help myself, because every time I got up, I was reconfirming to myself why I couldn't do it anymore. And when teenage, you know, teens or young kids ask me questions that I never thought of, it made it put it even more in perspective of, you know, why I was staying away from that lifestyle. <laughs> I'm very happy with my life right now. I think I'm, you know, on the track to where I want to be, and doing what I want to do, so it's definitely good. Nicole, one of the reasons you speak and you give back and you did things the way you did is to keep yourself on the straight and narrow. Is it difficult even today? Absolutely. You know, there's, it's not like I don't have days where I don't want to cope with reality and it hurts and, you know, something happens where I don't know how to deal with it. It happens. Um, you know, it's, it's almost been three years and I still have days that you know I don't know how I'm going to get through it but I do advice for teenagers who might be thinking about using drugs or using drugs for that matter um, I mean the biggest reason that I do this is so so that they see you know that I that I did come out of it and I know what it feels like to be alone and I know what it feels like you know to like cry yourself to sleep at night because you don't know how you feel anymore you don't know what it is to feel but, you know, I can promise you that adding that to, the, to your life only makes it more difficult. And, you know, if you really want to quit, if, you, if it's really in your heart that you don't want to do it anymore, just wake up every morning and say, all right, today, today I'm not going to do drugs. And that's conceivable. A lifetime seems impossible. But a day to time, it's not so bad. Our thanks to Nicole for sharing her story and her journey out of addiction. You know, even though Nicole was drawn to drugs and got addicted to several of them, she became aware that drugs were not solving her problems or making her happy. All she felt was numb. She was able to get clean with that one day at a time approach. You know, so many people relapse into their former patterns of drug abuse because they fall off the wagon once. Nicole has shown wisdom far beyond her years because she forgave herself for an occasional lapse until she could gather the strength to get completely clean. On top of that, we commend Nicole for sharing her experience with other teens. No one is better than a peer to persuade adolescents not to use or abuse drugs. Thanks, Nicole, for being a role model. We wish you every success in your drug-free life. When we come back, strategies to help get teenagers off drugs.
Welcome back to American Family. For information on the positive solutions we offer on this or any other American Family show, please check out our website, www.americanfamily.tv. Joining us now are Beverly Watts Davis, Director of the Center for Substance Abuse Prevention for the Federal Government's Agency with the sole responsibility for drug prevention, and Kathy Sickler, a primary counselor specializing in adolescence at Vanguard Services, a well-known substance abuse services provider in the Washington, D.C. area. We welcome you both to American Family. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure Kathy, to be here. Kathy, let me start with you. Teenagers, mm -hmm. what's the best way to get them off drugs? What do you recommend? Well, depending upon the severity of the drug use, um, I would recommend removing them from the environment, being able to stabilize them physically in case they're experiencing any withdrawal symptoms or detoxing, and teaching them the skills to be able to return back into their home environment, to be able to overcome those obstacles that they'll be facing. Okay, because the home environment and the school environment are, are associated with the drug use. Yes, ma'am. Um, we do a lot of very intensive work with the school system that the clients come from. We also require family participation. Uh, we also request participation from the court services unit or Department of Social Services from the jurisdiction that the adolescent's with. And we find that the more people that are involved, the more we can advocate for these clients and give them the strength that they need to be able to overcome the obstacles of substance abuse. Well, getting kids into rehab costs money, and that's where Beverly <laughs> comes in. She's in charge of the agency that uh, hands out grant money. Uh, Correct. How, how is the federal government increasing its efforts? Well, the federal government actually is increasing its efforts because we're actually changing the way we've done business in the past. And this is because we have to be very cognizant. We have to be the best partners to agencies such as Vanguard. We're doing two very significant things. First one being, we are increasing the length of the funding stream from one year to five years. Good. This allows for organizations to stabilize out their funding and focus on the client and not trying to find money every year. Mm -hmm. okay. Secondly, we have broken down eliminated the silos that we have normally used in the past to fund things. For instance, we would fund ecstasy one year, or another year we would fund methamphetamines, or another year we would fund marijuana, another year it would be alcohol. Well, quite frankly, many young people are poly drug users. They're going to mm -hmm. use alcohol along with something else. So those strategies did not work. So what we are now doing is we are funding the need that communities identify. It doesn't matter what it is because a community in Idaho will be different than that of one in California, one in Texas, one in Washington. We are funding states and communities to address the need and funding it comprehensively. We are now funding prevention along with Good. treatment, along with mental health disorders so that we're getting a comprehensive solution and solving a hundred percent of a problem. Kathy, tell me, how do you keep the teenagers off drugs when they're so available? I think that you need to teach those teenagers the skills that they need to be able to say no. It's not enough for a D.A.R.E. program to come into an elementary school once. It's not enough for parents to think that the schools are taking care of it. I think you need comprehensive efforts in all areas, in the social environment, and not just the town that they live in, but the specific community that they live in, um, any churches that are available within the school system, and not just on a guidance counselor level. We need to be teaching it in the classrooms. Parents need to be educated. Parents need to be going to their own classes before they can educate the kids. 